Um, now going to show you how you can also create a task and assignment. So for example, here we've got, you've got the add button here. You also, if you go into resources, you also can add it from here. So if I click on this one, it actually takes you to all the possible tools that you can use. So you've got tests, task, assignments, surveys, discussions. Um, so task is usually used when we ask someone to do some work, but they don't have to actually submit anything. So they just have to either put a comment in if they wanted to or just say yes and no that they've done it. Um, assignments are used when a student has to submit something in return. Um, discussions, of course, are a way to have discussions as you would face to face, but rather online. And the test tool is used when doing an online test. So with the task button, you don't have to just do it for homework. You could also do it as the children are at home. You could do it to set the work that they need to do. So for example, read chapter 10. Um, if I wanted to, I can put some information on here. If I click on more options, you will see this is actually very similar to the rich content block. Um, I could put a deadline in there. So again, you can use a specific event if you've got the timetable in there. You can set a specific time or, or just specify the end of a certain day. Um, if it's homework, you'll click on homework. Um, if I go to show more options, I get the option to be able to upload a file. So if the children do not have the relevant textbooks at home, but there's a PDF version that you maybe wanted to share with them, or there's a report you want to share, you can upload it straight into that. And it is quite easy in that sense, in the fact that if you've got OneDrive or Google Drive link, you could also use that to upload the, the work. Um, obviously mandatory and non-mandatory. You can always set work. So if we're setting work for the next few weeks, you can set it up and not make it active just yet. You can make it active at a certain time span. Um, but for now, we'll say that it's active. Um, you can also add learning objectives if you put that into your um, into this learning platform. So the task that was created a little while ago by Mark, you can see on this page here that all the children that have not completed it are listed um, here. But of course, when they complete it, they just tick whether they've completed it or not, um, or the teacher can tick that for them. If there's any comments, they would appear in here. Going back to the resources section now, we're going to show you how to create an assignment. Now, assignments are used where a child um, has to submit some work back. So if it's very easy to create. If I just click into it, add a title. Now, my title is going to be um, Submit Feedback. Please watch the video and give feedback. Now that's what I want them to do. So I do have the option of being used, able to use the embed video like we did earlier and put a picture, put the video up here, use links, add any other one of these features that I want to. Um, further down here I've got add files. Now this file could either be something that the child has to read or work through and understand or it could be a template file that the child uses to then submit their work. Now this template file can does not need to be downloaded, saved and re-uploaded every time. What a teacher can do is use the make a copy feature and send one template to every single child to submit their work back on. Now that's very easy to do. As long as you've got your OneDrive or your um, Google Drive connected, you just click on add file, find the file in your OneDrive. Here I've got a sample worksheet click add and then down here you got student can view which means they have to download it remember to save it and re-upload it um, which sometimes children actually do forget to um, save um, but then and or they don't have space on their computer or phone to actually download it but if you do make a copy for each student it sends out a copy to every single student that you've got on the course what that then means is that they can work on the platform and submit it that way. 
Moving over to the right, you've got visibility. So you can decide when you want it to become visible. At the minute, it's visible straight away, but you can put a limit on it. You can make it become visible if you're future planning. You can make it visible next week or the week after. Or you could also get the option of only making it available for a set number of days. So, for example, if it was revision work that they had to do, you can make it visible up until the exam date and then it becomes um, non-visible to the child. If it's work that they need to submit, you could put in a deadline and either get, choose to close it after the deadline or allow children to submit even after a deadline. If it's activity and you um, that needs to be done as homework, you'll tick this. Ticking this means it also appears as homework on the overview page, on the home page, and also on their app. And if you're using parents, on the parent dashboard as well. If you have an assignment scale um, put into the platform, these would appear here and you could decide on that to then obviously get your 360 degree reports and your mentor reports. And of course, if you wanted to use peer-to-peer -peer assessment or self-assessment, you could tick one of these. To use peer-to-peer -peer assessment, you do have to put in a deadline because this peer-to-peer -peer assessment only becomes available 15 minutes after the deadline time has been passed. Um, this means that automatically a few of the child's peers are sent the work to, um, to mark for the... Um, child so if I show you an example of that if it is something you wanted to do um, say I want it for Monday now I could tick this and I can put how many assessments I want per student so it could be just one or it can be three um, oh well it could be more than three if you wanted to but default becomes three so that's another nice little tool that you might want to introduce now that children are working on their own um, at home Obviously, if there's any group work, you get you can tick that and either collect, create a group or use a group that you've already got. Um, the advantage of that, especially if you've got Office 365 integrated into the platform, um, the advantage is the children can work on it collectively at the same time on one document and be able to comment on each other's work as they're going through it. Um, and a great, again, that's a great feature to use right now where they're working from home because they get the option to still be able to work together. Um, and again, these features here are to if you wanted to make it anonymous when children are submitting their work. And this one here is to say that it's an activity that they can do to increase their knowledge, but it's not mandatory. Um, similar to the task, if I create the assignment, but you see here that my, this student that I've got in this course here hasn't actually submitted it. But when she does, it would tell me that it's been submitted. I'll be able to re um, review it and give her some feedback on it. 